Welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. All right, guys, we're here at Hasport and we've got something a little bit different today. Uh, well, not too much different. Uh, kind of a day in life at Hasport. We have Michael Hinton from Axion uh, Industries. He's bringing in his Civic SI, and uh, actually it's not a Civic SI, same as Civic SI. It's a Civic Sport hatchback. He's bringing it in, and we are gonna swap out the mounts for the new Hasport FE STK engine mounts. With this video, we'll show you how they're installed, and then we're gonna take it for a quick test drive and see what it's like. Our mounts have actually been mounted on a few cars before. Civic SI at SEMA, that's HPD's running at 25 hours for Thunder Hill. It was also mounted on the Civic that's being run by Honda Research West. HPD had the HPD version of the mounts and uh, Passport version on the uh, Team Honda Research West car. The uh, rear mount has already been replaced. I have some video, which we'll show you as soon as I get done with this little explanation. But that was installed first on this car. He's been driving it around, uh, seeing what it's like with the slightly stiffer rear. Uh, normally there's a plate that goes here that attaches uh, with uh, two screws up front, two screws in the back, and then some Zeus fasteners that actually attach into some plastics that he's taken off. And he's taking it off because he's gonna be doing different work with the exhaust and stuff like that. And he wanted it you know, not to be in the way. This is the PRL downpipe. Uh, the flex joints put right here. Uh, he has it just dumping right now. He just put a little dump tube on it. So uh, it's uh, actually uh, just uh, immediately, uh, it's kind of loud, but it's kind of cool. So uh, that's what it's doing right now. The car's been running around with the rear mount. And uh, what do you think about the drivability of the car it's with great. the rear mount? Yeah, I don't, I don't feel the vibrations at all. At all? Yeah, uh, a little bit with the AC on the AC at on. idle, but that's about it. Okay, yeah. very good. So anyway, uh, rear mount was installed already. Uh, we'll show you the video of that now. So that one was actually threaded in pretty far before you even put the mount in there, so you didn't have yeah. to really do much. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm gonna start with a difficult one, which is uh, the, the driver's side. We'll have to disconnect the battery, remove it, uh, the air box, and then we'll be able to get to what we need to down there and put it all together. I'm gonna to also be looking at hardware as I do this. Uh, we put together a hardware list for the Honda people. That was actual Honda hardware. Uh, might offer it as a option here, uh, but we're um, gonna be using the Hasport hardware, which is just slightly different. First thing I need to do is support the engine so that when I disconnect the mount, it doesn't fall down in there.
Look at that. That's just for wire management. <laughs> Two pounds. Two pounds weight saving. How many bolts did you have to take out to get to that bolt? I I take out four bolts to get to that bolt. And then there's three bolts holding it in the side. Back in the day, Honda would have made two bolts holding the battery tray on top and then two underneath that you kind of reach down there and take off blindly and then they actually have slotted holes so you just kind of slide them out. But now it's sub brackets and brackets. Brackets with braces. Do you think it's because the chassis are stiffer now? I think it's because, yeah, I think it's because the chassis aren't as straightforward. They're a lot more convoluted and curved and um, set up so that there's a lot more swoopiness to them. And that is, has to do with strength because there's more strength in these formed pieces of metal than there are flat pieces of metal just kind of joined together. So that requires a lot more bends and things. So, oh boy. Now this is gonna have to come loose. So the question is, where's the clips? Tidy little piece. Almost identical to the last generation. Just a little bit more extension to reach farther into the engine bay because this car is wider. So we have this special ground washer that sits up on top. And uh, a lot of you may be thinking, well, that's not gonna ground because this is powder coated. Well, this has been exposed. So when it clamps onto the transmission, that's for the ground. The ground's through the bolt, through the threads, through this onto the transmission. We'll torque it down once it's in. See this handy little hook? That's for actually handling the motor when it's out of the car. There's one of those on the transmission right here. That's now redundant, so we're gonna take that out. We now have it on the mount. The mount is now mounted, everything is tightened up, and I'm only halfway done with this mount. Now I gotta put all the stuff back in. Uh, normally what I would do, what I suggest you do, is take pictures as you take it apart, sort all the bolts in their appropriate places. That way you don't have a bunch of leftover stuff when you're all done. But we're now gonna put it all back together and uh, get her buttoned up on this side so we can head to the other side. We are ready to change the other side. Um, this is gonna be kind of interesting. I'm not sure how we're gonna get pie the uh, AC hose. I think we might be able to pull the reservoir out, bring it out to the side and kind of come out this way with it. It's pretty big. Um, one thing about these mounts 
the 8th Gen Civic, the 9th Gen Civic, the 10th Gen Civic, they have these side braces and sometimes they even have a brace back to the, the shock tower. Make sure you put those in. We've had a few people think that they could get away without doing that and these mounts are just too tall. There's too much leverage on them, they flex and it will eventually work hard in the mount and cause it to break. So make sure you put your brace on afterwards. Belt looking uh, hunk of aluminum. are awesome um, very little vibration we're on the 62 A's so it's the street um, the exhaust a little loud so we're getting a lot a lot more noise from that um, but no I think they're fantastic steering feels great throttle response feels great with them can't go wrong you know the cars just especially interior wise is so soundproof um, you really don't get any harsh vibrations at all